All right, I'm Chris Kraft, and I guess I was the, the guy who helped Saltex work, although people like Don Tree Smith did an awful lot and made it happen. I'm here to describe the experiment, the ecological underpinnings, the, um, the experimental design, what we found out, and what we're doing now. So it's, it's called Saltex, which is short for Seawater Addition Long-Term Experiment. And the goal was to look at the effects of climate change, particularly sea level rise and storm surge on, tide, on a tidal freshwater marsh. So these marshes are flooded twice a day by the tides, but they're so far up the river, the flooding is with fresh water. And one of the consequences of sea level rise is gonna be saltwater intrusion further upriver that's gonna affect these tidal fresh marshes and also these tidal fresh forests that are up here. Um, so in 2014, we set the experiment up, actually from about 2012 to 2014. And uh, the questions we're asking were two kinds of saltwater intrusion events. One is a press treatment. And the idea is that we consistently and continuously dose a subset of plots with about 15,000 parts per thousand salinity, brackish water. And we did this, Don Treesum delivered water to these plots about four days a week, every week for four years. And the purpose of the press treatment is to simulate the effects of long-term sea level. We have a separate set of plots that are called the pulse treatment. And these plots receive brackish water, same 15 parts per thousand, during the months of September and October, four times a week roughly. And then the other 10 months of the year, they just receive fresh river water. And the purpose of the pulse treatment is to look at the effects of hurricane storm surge or drought that creates low, low river flow and its effects on, on the, the marsh itself. The way we get the, the salt water to the plots, you know, the tidal freshwater marsh is located 15, 20 kilometers upstream on the Altamaha River from the ocean. And so we would collect water at Meridian, which is the ferry dock on the mainland that brings people over to Sapelo, and we would fill up a big fertigation tank in the back of a pickup truck and drive it 11 miles down to our tidal freshwater site on the Altamaha River. We had a couple of big fertigation tanks on site that we would um, gravity deliver the, this salt water to, the, to the, um, the tanks themselves. We have a pump on site where we pump fresh river water, which is the river is only about 100 meters from our, our plots. And so we use the, um, the pump to, to bring fresh water from the river, mix it in these holding tanks, and then use that same pump to deliver the treatment water to the different plots. So each, there's five treatments, and each treatment is replicated six times. So we have a total of 30 plots, and they're relatively large. They're 2.5 meters on a side, and that's like 5.25 square meters. So the plots are big enough to look at microbial, plant, soil, and invertebrate response to the treatments. So what did we find? Well, um, when we started dosing the press plots, within three weeks, we started seeing elevated salinity in the pore water. And the goal of the, of the treatment was to try to elevate pore water salinity from zero parts per thousand, which is fresh, to about two to five parts per thousand. And the reason we're interested in pore water is because that's what the plant roots are seeing. That's what they're experiencing, not the surface water flooding. So within three to four weeks, we're starting to make these plots a little bit saline. Um, and when, within three months, we started to see plant communities, the plant communities start to change. We have four dominant species in the plots. Dizaniopsis, giant cut grass, which is a colonial dominant. We have Pontidaria, pickerel weed, which makes a nice purple flower. We have Polygonum, um, which is another emergent freshwater plant. And then we have the Ludwigia, which is a ground cover species. And within three months, the ground cover species, Ludwigia, disappeared from the press plots. And in the second year, polygonum disappeared from the press plots. So we're seeing basically species composition change. We've seen a few new species come in, but not really take over. The other two fresh species, Pontidaria and Zizaniopsis, did not disappear from the plots, but they were stressed and their biomass and coverage went down. For the pulse plots, we didn't see as much of a change in the plant community. We did see the disappearance of Ludwigia but the other species remained in the plots during the four-year dosing. We measured a lot of other things, poor water chemistry, not only poor water salinity, but inorganic nitrogen and phosphorus, and, and we actually saw an increase 
a release of ammonium, nitrate, and phosphate into the water column in the press treatment. So basically it could contribute to eutrophication. Saltwater intrusion could contribute to eutrophication by releasing these inorganic nutrients into the pore water. And then the last thing we measured is we were looking at changes in soil surface elevation. And we use these um, sedimentation erosion tables, or SETs for short. And these are benchmarks that are put in outside the plot. And these benchmarks are pounded into the ground to a depth of about 45 to 50 feet. So it creates a stable benchmark. And we have this arm that comes off the benchmark and goes into the plot at a fixed angle and fixed location every time. And we're able to carefully measure change in elevation of the soil surface, whether it's increasing or decreasing, repeatedly at the same points in the plots. And what we found was with the loss of vegetation, particularly below ground biomass in the press plots, over a four year period, we lost about three centimeters of soil elevation. It subsided three centimeters. That's pretty consequential in a wetland because small changes in elevation lead to big changes in species composition and whether a plant can grow there or not. So at the end of 2017, after a couple hurricanes I and mean, a few other factors, we, we ended the study. And so what we've been doing now for the past few years is looking at recovery. You know, how quickly does vegetation recover in the plots? Do the same species that disappear come back? And do they come back in the same order? How does gas exchange change? And does the soil surface start to regain elevation in the press plots once you um, stop dosing? We found that within six months, pore water salinity dropped to zero. After about a year, the inorganic nutrients in pore water declined back to background levels. The plants have started to revegetate the plots, not necessarily in the same order that they disappeared. We do have a few brackish species that are coming in, but we don't see like wholesale um, replacement of fresh marsh by brackish marsh species. And the press plots are gaining elevation again as the biomass and the plants come back and the pulse plots are gaining elevation as well. And the pulse plots, their elevation is about back to what the control treatments and the freshwater treatments are.